Okay, so today we'll start screening for critical congenital heart disease, and I will show you a list of them, which one we need. At the same time, the screening will find out sick patients. The screening is done by our new machine. It's not a new, but new to us. It's the Massimo Radical Center. You can see it has a router and the, the main. So if you press here, you can take it out and you can put it back. Okay, so you can move it between patients easily. Okay, and uh, you just need to switch it on and do the screening. So uh, the screening uh, is done on the patient's right hand and one of the either, the, one of them, right or left, it doesn't matter. So right hand and one of the either. Okay, so what you do is, um, you put the Massimo prop with the sensor. And you can send the sensor has two places, you can see. You, if you have to rip off the cover, take it out. And you can see there is two sensors. There is the sender, the, em uh, the emitter, and the recipient. These has to face each other, and the tissue has to be in between. Usually in newborn babies, it's the whole arm, but for me, is my finger. So this has to oppose this. So the beam, the light beam, can traverse the tissue from the emitter to the recipient to start recording. Okay? So if you can see, if I put it right away, you take time and start recording. Despite I'm not ripping it off, it will start recording. So usually it takes time to record. Okay, let me remove it. So you can see after you rip it off, you put it like this. You wait a little bit until the yeah, picture. So it will be on the right upper arm and one of the inner. The result will be either pass, which you now you can see that the saturation, the heart rate that also gives you the perfusion index. Okay, and usually it takes time to record, and also when it appears first, it might not be the real number, it needs time to go up. Okay? Now probably I am not sure because I'm putting the mask, but in newborn babies it should be high. Okay? So if you see it low, just wait a little bit. And then uh, you have three of either pass, fail, or it will vocal. out. Pass means negative. Nothing needs to be done. What is pass? Pass, the saturation should be 95 and above, more than 94, in either places. And the difference between the right upper and one of the lower limb should be either free or less. Okay, fail when the saturation is less than 90 in any of the places. Equivocal, either the saturation in either places is 90 to 94, one, or the difference between the two places is uh, more than three. Okay? So if fail, mean test is positive, you have to do two things. First, call the program assistant, and we have pattern right now. So Phantom can organize with me a bedside echo. And call the GP or the MRP to do a clinical assessment. The clinical assessment including physical examination, such as you know, femoral pulse, auscultating, looking at the baby, maybe ordering CBC, electrolyte, blood gas, chest x-ray, and so on. And Fountain will contact me, we will do echo. Once we do echo, okay, we have three results of the echo. 
either we find a critical congenital heart disease, and I will show you the list, and that's why we will admit the baby to an ICU and call the cardiologist to confirm the diagnosis. Or we find a problem that is not critical. In that situation, we will put as an outpatient with the pediatric cardiologist. Or we find it negative. If we find it negative, again, we will talk with the cardiologist. Because it's failed, and we have not, we might miss something. To confirm, so appointment would be outpatient pediatric coroner, either non-critical or negative. While admission to the ICU, uh, an ICU, when it's a critical congenital heart disease. Now, before we decide it's positive or negative, uh, we need to look at a list of uh, problems. I will show it to you. So here's um, um, an algorithm. So the test should be done after 24 hours of life, not before 24 hours. However, if the patient wants to go home for any reason, and he, the parents are persistent, it's better to be done, not, not be done. But the, the rate of failure is high, because the PDA is still open. So it's better to be done, just zoom on this, more than or equal to 24 hours. But if the patient wants to go on, it can be less than 24 hours. So you have less than 90, whether the first time or second time or third time, it's considered failure. Or if it's more than or equal, more than to 94, more than or equal to 95, in any situation, three times, it's considered negative. If it's between 90 and 94, or the difference more than three, then it's considered equivocal. So the nurse has to wait one hour and repeat it again. If it's negative, if it's positive, or again, it's equivocal. Wait another hour and repeat it third time. If it's negative, go there. If it's positive, go there. If it's third time and remain equivocal, we will consider it positive, fail. And we'll do like, you can see, same screen. OK? So this is the mouse, right? Is it there? What is the mouse on this? Oh, here. So before we decide it's negative, And this is a complete policy timing and okay. Before you consider it negative, uh, there's a list of the problem the nurse can look at before saying it's negative or it's equivocal. Okay? First the light affects the reading. So if there is direct light, the ambient light. Make sure there is no direct light on the on the probe when you do the recording. Mm -hmm. Second, there might be electro magnetic interference, such as from TV or mobile or tablet or computer. Mm -hmm. Just make sure. The third is the probe are detached, and there might sometimes poor perfusion. Mm -hmm. So you might need to cover the limb, warm it a little bit, mm -hmm. if you find it negative. And sometimes, especially you are in the Middle East, you might have hemoglobin, you know, abnormal hemoglobin, especially in the family. So we can ask the family if there are any blood disease or blood problems because it can affect them. When you call the uh, MRT, the in charge physician of the baby, or the GP, or the resident, they will look to this problem. Is there a risk of sepsis? Is this a sepsis patient? Is there RDS, if there is patient acutinic or something? Mm. Or it might be PBHM, especially the difference between right upper and one of the either limbs, lower limbs. 
uh, is high. There might be history of meconium, and baby might be cold, uh, hemoglobinopathy, pneumonia, pneumothorax, all this, they okay. you have to look at it, okay? And they might order some blood tests. So the screening will not only help to uh, find the future of congenital heart disease, but also can find can find uh, other diseases. Okay, these are these. While the, when I, we do the echo, we look for these critical congenital. There is a list of them in the policy. There is a list of them in the policy that you can look at it. Here. So we can see it uh, from 1 to 13 mm. critical mm -hmm. congenital that we look at. It. So if we find one of these, we admit the baby to an ICU. If we don't find, we find less critical. We book appointment with the cardiologist. If it's negative, the, test, the patient, sorry, positive, failed, and the GB did not find anything clinically. And we also didn't find anything. Mm. So we might miss something. So we will book appointment with the pediatric cardiologist just for confirmation and safe practice. Um, so the policy will be in the shared drive, and I will post the video for screening. And we'll start today at noon time, everybody. So if you are trained, do it. If you don't, if a nurse is on call or not, she should ask for help. And you can monitor the video, you can look at the video many times, and you can read the policy, and you can call me at any time, day and night. So my phone number is in the email that I sent to everybody, and I will send a, another confirmation email today. Uh, so you can call me at any time. And if you don't know, ask for help. Okay?